What's going on guys, Merrick here, back with another Dragon Ball Super Deck Profile. We've been getting a lot of requests from people to do different decks with different leaders, and give our take on how we would play a certain deck or a certain leader, and I gotta say it's been a lot of fun trying to figure out how to make all of these, uh, these different cards usable since, for the most part, most decks seem pretty linear, uh, depending on which leader you pick, they're all gonna run the same type of cards, some of them run the exact same list, some people, you know, they'll add a few cards here and there, but for the most part, not a lot changes. And that's kind of my goal when I build decks, is trying to figure out how to build a deck and change it up so that it's still playable, but not, but doesn't play the same way that everybody else plays it. And this time we went with the Colossal Warfare leader, Piccolo. Unfortunately, he's got the generic when he attacks a leader, draw a card, and he does allow you to reactivate two energy uh, when he awakens, and he also he is also Universe 7 and a god, so there's a lot of different ways you can play the leader alone uh, between him being Universe 7, being a god, and being a Namekian. Uh, there's just there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, take advantage of all those traits that he has. And then on the Awakened side, we have Piccolo, Kami's successor. <laughs> He's got permanent Bond 2 Namekian. Uh, he gains critical when you have two Namekians or more in your battle area, and when he attacks, draw a card and choose up to one Namekian in your battle area, and he gains 5,000 power for the duration of the turn. So any of those crit attackers uh, that are Namekians would be really nice to give, or uh, any of the Namekians allow you to draw a card, anything like that. Uh, that 5,000 boost is really going to help make a difference. And I gotta say, I really do like the Piccolo leader. And I've been trying for a while to figure out the best way to play him. So up first we run four newfound powers, Son Gohan. He's a one cost 5,000 power that says, when this card attacks you may choose one card in your life, add it to your hand. If you do so, he gains 10,000 power in critical for the duration of the turn. So it's a nice self-awakening tool to have in the deck. And it's also, it's a pretty strong crit attacker you can drop for one energy. Uh, dropping that on the first turn is swinging with it. Chances are they're not going to try and combo out of it. Unless, of course, they're running like the Herculeator or something. Up next, we have our first Piccolo card. It's Speed Attack Piccolo Jr. And even though it's Piccolo Jr., it's still Piccolo. Piccolo Jr. is uh, the Piccolo we've all come to know and love. He's a 2-cost, 15,000 power with critical uh, he's just another card you can play early on to put pressure on your opponent and uh, critical is a great way to do that and for a two cost that's not really uh, difficult to manage at all however if you wanted to take a less aggressive approach we also run four indomitable link piccolo he's a two cost 10,000 that says when you play this card choose up to one Sun Gohan adolescence with an energy cost of three or less from your deck and add it to your hand uh, so there are several targets that you can use for this Piccolo. Uh, we only run one of them in this deck uh, because this is a blue-green deck uh, and a couple of the better targets are red. So we don't get to utilize that f as fully as we want to. Uh, Green-red would be an also a very good way to go about doing this deck. Um, we haven't attempted to try it yet. Mainly because I had a few ideas that required blue to be in the deck, and so we went ahead with green-blue instead of green-red. Although green-red would be a much more aggressive uh, build than the one we have here. Then we have none other than our three-cost Gohan Adolescence. It's Indomitable Link Sun Gohan. He He's a 3 cost 15,000. says when you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of 4 or less and KO it. So chances are you're going to KO anything that is on the board when you play this card. Uh, there's usually not a lot of cards that are, you know, higher than 3 energy costs on turn 4, or on turn 3. Uh, there are here and there, but for the most part it's just not going to happen. And even so... You can play it any time and get a free KO with it, so not a bad card at all. Then we swap back over to the Piccolo faction. We run four Focus Mind Piccolo. He's a three cost, 15,000 power with Blocker, Barrier, and during your opponent's turn, if you have four more energy, he gains 5,000 power. So he's a 20 cost Blocker on your opponent's turn, and with Barrier, it's 
there's a very good chance that they're not getting him off the board shy of just attacking into him. Uh, attacking him with battle cards that can attack active mode cards is the easiest way uh, to get around him, it seems. A great card, even better when you play him uh, via the ability of one of the other cards that we're about to show you. And uh, also, he's blue, so he gives you blue energy. If you draw into him, you can just charge it. Ch I've never really charged more than one blue energy, so you never really hard cast him, but that's okay because you can play him for free. Then we also run four Kami Power Piccolo. He He's a four cost 20,000 with barrier and double strike. And once per turn, his bond two, if you choose one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it, and he just requires you to have two battle cards, uh, including himself. So one other card on the board, play this Piccolo, bam, you get a free KO with it. And with double strike, he's coming in swinging pretty hard. Then lastly, we have my favorite tech of the deck. It's four fully trained Super Saiyan Son Gohan. <laughs> The 4 costs 20,000 power with double strike, and when you play this card, you choose up to 1 Piccolo with the energy cost of 3 or less from your deck and play it. So, with this Gohan, you can play the Universe 7 Blue Piccolo Blocker. You can play the Piccolo G that searches out a Gohan. I like this card because he can pull out so many different Piccolo options. So being able to bring you out a free blocker or, you know, just another free attacker and then having double strike on himself uh, just gives you a lot of gives you a lot of flexibility whether you want to add extra pressure to your opponent or try and get yourself a little more uh, to defend yourself with. Then, since our leader is green, we run four Dark Temptation Toa. She's a three cost, 15,000. And when you play her using Overrealm, if your leader is green or yellow, you choose... One of your leaders and gets 5,000 power for the duration of the turn, and your opponent chooses a card in their hand and places it in the drop area. So it's really nice with the Piccolo leader, because if you have the Namekians on the board, then he's got Critical, and then he also gets the extra 5,000 boost from Dark Temptation Toa as well. And just making your opponent discard a card is also nice. Then she's there for another attack, or you can just combo with her uh, to get an extra 5,000 and to add another card to your drop for next turn's Overrealm. Up next, we have our super combo. We run four Backbone of Universe 7 Sun Goku. Now, the reason we run Sun Goku is for a few different reasons, actually. The first one being that since he is this Piccolo is Universe 7, you can play the Sun Goku. Uh, we did have Sayonal in there, but it doesn't really change anything except for the fact that he's Namekian. But since we're not playing Planet Namek, that also has no impact on... Uh, there being any point to running him. Since he's a god, you could run Hellies uh, for the extra draw, the extra deck thinning, and the extra uh, overwhelm fueling, but I chose the Goku for a specific side deck tech that I thought would help us out a lot more in the long run. Then, in an attempt to take advantage of the Piccolo Leader's critical ability, we ran two Encouraging Presence Manaka. Uh, for one energy, if your leader gains double strike and you get to draw a card, so then he becomes a double strike crit attacker, and if you've played the Toa that turn, you can also give him the 5,000 boost. I thought it was a nice little tech that you could be able to pull off if you had a blue energy, and then that way you could try and get a little more extra crit damage, or force your opponent into trying to combo out of it and uh, whittle away at their card advantage. Then, of course, the biggest reason to run blue at all, we run four Sensu Beans. Uh, you choose a battle card, and you choose one of your cards, it gets 5,000 power for the duration of the turn, and then you restand two of your energy. Still one of the best blue cards in the entire game. Then we run four of Piccolo's signature move, the Special Beam Cannon. Special Beam Cannon! So one cost activate battle it says if your leader card is Piccolo, it gains plus ten thousand power for the duration of the turn, and then you choose up to one of your opponent's one card in your opponent's hand and place it in their drop area. So of course you choose the card at random, uh, but to give your leader that extra ten thousand boost and it's already getting crit, plus if you played the Monaka and it's got double strike and you're ripping a card out of your opponent's hand. Like, you can couple that with just all those cards, including the Toa, and just rip cards from your opponent while trying to hit them for massive damage and get rid of even more cards that they'll never see. Then lastly, we have our Negate. We run four Sacrifice because 
This deck is dedicated to Piccolo and Gohan, so we couldn't not run this card. It's also a great uh, counter card as well. You negate the attack, and if your leader is Namekian, then you can choose a card from your life and add it to your hand, and you don't have to pay this card's energy cost. So, also another way to awaken, another way to avoid the crit damage, especially if you're going to take crit damage. This way you still get the card to your hand, so you're not really losing out on anything. And it's just these kind of negates are kind of becoming the new they're becoming the new good thing uh, with set five coming out we've got the magic whatever for janimba that restands two energy that's a better wheeze we got the after image for red that gives one of your cards 40,000 power and minuses one of your opponents by 10 like they're just having these these negates is going to become more and more common and I don't know if that's a good thing or not because self-awakening is one of the things that has kind of made the game more of a rush to just do as much damage to yourself as possible and which prevents the game from going longer into turns so allow you to play a bigger variety of cards so I'm not really sure how I feel about it but the negates themselves are pretty fantastic so now, as far as a side deck for this deck goes, you've got a lot of options. Uh, the very first one that came to my mind, and this was actually a card I considered putting in the main deck, and I probably will do that as well, is Ready to Strike Piccolo. He actually is from the Union Force set, along with the fully trained Super Saiyan Son Gohan. He's a 3 cost 15,000 blocker that says at the end of their turn your opponent must choose cards from their hand until they only have 6 remaining and place the chosen cards in the drop area. So all of those decks that have a lot of cards in hand such as, uh, you know, Hercule, Announcer, Storm decks, they cannot keep their hand at such a high number. The only downside is since he doesn't have barrier he is susceptible to being KO'd. Not really such a big deal to have to worry about against Storm. More so an issue to have to worry about against Announcer or Hercule. Because the blue goku Oob combo can uh, prevent you from keeping him on the board. As well as the Trunks uh, creepy stripper guy as well. So, uh, But a good option. I would probably actually take him out of the side deck. Put him in the main deck and uh, take out the crit piccolos and then that way you uh, could just have him in the main deck and you could you know force your opponent to KO him before you know being able to commit so much of their card advantage of course it again with those particular decks the Goku Oob combo is so easy to play that getting around him won't be that bit difficult so first and foremost Mass Saiyan uh, I would probably do too. Mass Saiyan is a great card to side deck against pretty much almost any deck just because he doesn't like to focus. Uh, because he's a 20,000 double strike that you're playing for one energy. Uh, you're KOing cards up to five as long as none of them are blockers. Like He's just a great card all around uh, both to clear your opponent's board and to hit them in the face as well. Then I believe pretty much everybody that's not main decking this is side decking it. It's Time Control Kronoa. The girl who just rejects Shugesh again and again because of his ridiculous bowl cut hair. She got deflect and when you play her you draw a card and your opponent basically can't play cards with Shugesh. They also can't play them via Pan but nobody runs the Pan Super Combo and if they do they're still not using her swap ability. Then we get into some of my favorite side deck tech. Uh, the first one is Group Leader Pilaf, since the deck runs blue, uh, and if you end up not having a negate to play, or you don't want to play your negate, you can play Pilaf. He's not technically a negate, he's just a counter, so he's not stopping your opponent's attacks, which a lot of cards, which some newer cards say that the attacks can't be negated. Well, you're not negating the attack, you're just negating one of their skills, and being able to negate a triple strike or something like that to save your ass is a really big deal. This next one I'm sure you guys are used to by now, Father, Son, Kamehameha. Uh, one cost, activate main, choose an opponent's battle card with energy cost larger or equal to their energy and KO it. Still one of the best uh, green extra cards we have, I think. And then lastly, for me... 
the big reason why I wanted to run the Goku Super Combo over Sayonal or Helis was so that I could side deck in last one standing Sun Goku. Because, to be honest, when I played this in the Gohan deck, this card was the MVP. Uh, once per turn, choose one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it. And when you play this card from your hand, if there are 9 or more Universe 7 in your drop area for the duration of the turn, this card gains 10,000 power, triple strike, and its attacks can't be negated. So, a 35,000 triple strike before combos, and your opponent can't negate the attacks. That is pretty perfect. Like, this Goku card is just, it's just so good. It's hard to play because your deck has to be built kind of around it. Um, the biggest issue I had with it is the fact that this is kind of a deck dedicated towards uh, Piccolo and Gohan's relationship. Uh, not so much Goku, but the card is just so good, and since you can actually take advantage of it, um, there's just there's no reason that you shouldn't. Now, we don't have an overabundance of Universe 7 cards. However, we do have 16 right here. We've got the four Indomitable Link Piccolo. The four Indomitable Link Sun Gohan. The four Focus Mind Piccolo. And then, as I stated before, the four Backbone of Universe 7 Sun Goku. So, that's 16 targets uh, that you could have in your drop area, and you only need half of those targets to be able to play this Goku and just totally fuck your opponent's face with it. I am not the biggest Goku fan as of Dragon Ball Super. I loved Goku in Dragon Ball and in all aspects of Dragon Ball Z, especially during the Cell Saga and during the Boo Saga. He was just, he was such a good character. But Dragon Ball Super kind of ruined him for me. But this, this card is just... We, we can't deny that Goku has some amazing cards in this game. But that's going to do it for my themed Piccolo Kami Successor deck profile. I know it's a little out there, and it's probably not super competitive, uh, but it is a lot of fun to play, especially when you get to drop the 4-drop Gohan, and uh, it's always fun to play Last One Standing Sun Goku and watch your opponent just be helpless as you pummel the shit out of him. Uh, but if you guys enjoyed the deck profile, if you like the concept of it, uh, feel free to hit that like button down below for us. You know, we appreciate the support, and we appreciate all of our subscribers as well. We're well over 1,200 now, and the channel's still growing. We're still getting a lot of support from you guys on all of our Dragon Ball content. If you guys have any comments or any thoughts on the deck, anything that you would change, uh, let me know in the comments below. As I said, you could do green-red with it as well, and in that case, I would probably take out... Um, any of the blue support, take out the Manakas, take out the Sensu Beans. You could t you could leave in the blue Piccolo blocker, and I probably would. And then you could take out the you could take out the Speed Attack Piccolos, or you could take out the Comedy Power Piccolos. You could take you definitely would want to take out the Indomitable Link Gohan, uh, so that you could put in the Burst Attack Gohan from the Tournament Pack Four, and you could also run. Miraculous Comeback Ultimate Gohan as well if you wanted to uh, run him to stick with the theme. Uh, but with that, we're going to go ahead and get the freak out of here now. And we will see you guys in the next video.